This project's been going on for eight years. I'm assuming you've built a fan base that probably involves social media, mm -hmm. and I wonder if that contributed to such a successful Indiegogo campaign. Um, I don't know what kind of social media or fan base you developed before you started that campaign. I wonder if you could speak about that. Yeah, that definitely was um, an important element. Uh, we established the Liaisons page on Facebook, and I also have my own page. Um, we established, of, of course, a website for the project, which was just uh, this um, at the end of the summer was um, uh, updated. Uh, looks even more fabulous now than it did then. My website was also uh, updated. This has to do with because of the recording release in September. Uh, it has we've gained more and more followers uh, on Facebook because of it. The Indiegogo as well, sending out mailing lists about the campaign. In ECM also this summer, ECM Records uh, requested that I open a Twitter account, which I had not done. The reason I had not done is because it was, in my eyes, it was one more thing to check. Right. <laughs> but uh, they said it was crucial to for networking, and it really has proved mm -hmm. really uh, effective because I'm being followed by people I never thought would, would follow me um, from all different areas, not only in the music world, but the theater world, the film world, mm -hmm. the pop world. Um, the medical world, it, it's, it's, it's really, it's sort of fascinating the way Twitter works that way. So speaking of Twitter, how have you found it to be so successful or, or easy for you to use to develop these? What, what's been your strategy for using Twitter? Well, I, I only tweet periodically when I'm given information that I, you know, they'll say, oh, tweet this. You know, ECM will say it or Rachel will say you should probably mention this. Or even my partner, who uh, works as an agent for a, a major publishing company, he, he'll, he's gung ho on this. So he'll say, you should post this, you should post this. And I found then that people retweet it. That's something that I was unaware of, is mm -hmm. that whole, the whole mechanism of the retweeting. And then people commenting on it, and then retweeting the comments. Mm -hmm. um, some things, I'll see the same tweet sometimes up to uh, 15 times in a day and wonder, you know, gee, this is really networking itself. Um, and because of that, there was a, a radio broadcaster at one of the uh, NPR stations in Rochester, New York, who um, got whole, who got wave of it. And also after I'd done the All Things Considered segment with Ari Shapiro uh, for NPR, uh, he went out and bought the recording. And now he says he wants to do his own interview. Um, people, I think it generated recording sales because people were, again, it could be their love of Sondheim, but they were so fascinated by what people were saying. And I was just so grateful. You mentioned using mailing lists. And I wonder how you generated those lists, who, how you knew who to contact that would be interested in donating to your Indiegogo campaign. Right. Well, early on with the website, we had mentioned that if people were interested in signing up to know more about the project, and then when we, I started recording, to start a, a preliminary list of when the recording would be ready and finished, because we knew that it was going to take several years to complete. Um, that, that started through the website, as well as a, uh, through uh, creating MailChimp mailing lists from that, as well as culling from both of our, our individual lists. Also, at each of the concerts, um, I, we would have uh, written a, a, a list up in the, in the lobby for people to write their name and email down, which got added. Mm -hmm. So every time I performed, that list was added as well. Uh, and people, Could you read what they wrote? Because that's one of the no, things. No, that's right? one of the hardest <laughs> things. People usually uh, were pretty good about that. Some people would also, you can contact me through my website. So people would contact me mm -hmm. and say, please put me on the mailing list. Um, and then just people hearing about it. I recently, one of the first release concerts for the disc uh, that in September at Birdland, a woman came up to me after the concert and said, I didn't know anything about this. I was brought by a friend and I'm coming, I want to come to the Symphony Space concert in November. And please, here's my card, please put me on your mailing list for the future. You know, I loved your playing, et cetera, et cetera. And I've written to her and we've had some exchanges and she's, she's so kind and she's already extended out to other people. And then other, I, I get now emails uh, just uh, off the cuff from presenters and, and people who run small clubs saying I've been uh, I've been uh, informed about this and it's just fascinating. I've already gone out and bought the recording. Some people said I've already bought copies for friends for for the holidays coming up. So I mean. I think the whole social media thing really does. I'm, it's a learning curve for me as well. 
Uh -huh. um, I think over the past uh, year and a half, and most especially in the past few months, uh, again, with having opened the Twitter account. So it's really just constantly updating and making sure that you're you're using the account. Yes, the updating is important, and sometimes, of course, that gets difficult when you're so busy, you forget to go in back to your website and update it. And I think websites are now, you can, uh, our website, a web designer is wonderful because he's created it in a way that you can go in yourself and make most of the right. updates and changes. I really like that. 